think the, the other thing that would be helpful for us to understand before we get into the science of blood flow restriction is to understand what strength is and to understand what hypertrophy is. Um, sh do you have a preference with which one we start with? Either one. Okay. So if we measure the size of my bicep today, you know, we could do it crudely with a tape measure. We could do it more accurately with an MRI or an ultrasound. And you were to prescribe exercises that we'll talk about whether with or without blood flow restriction, we can get into load, we can get into reps, et cetera. We come back and measure. And again, let's just use the gold standard. We'll use an MRI. We'll come back and measure me in six months. And demonstrably, my muscle has gotten bigger. What does that mean? Did I grow more muscle fibers? Did each fiber get bigger? How, how would you explain to somebody what happened in that cycle of hypertrophy? So there's a couple of different ways that it, it could happen. You could have an increase in fiber size, which is hypertrophy. So all the muscle cells that you have, maybe not all, but the muscle cell itself has gotten bigger. The other, so that's hypertrophy. The other component would be you have an increase in the number of cells. Uh, that's hyperplasia. In general, we, we don't think that hyperplasia is playing a big role. Um, at least in adults. And I, I wouldn't necessarily rule it out, but it doesn't seem like we have a lot of evidence for that. So we always just look at gross changes and assume that it's probably hypertrophy. So what that, when, you're in, when your muscle was to get bigger following exercise, what that would mean is, is that the, the individual cells inside that bicep have increased in size. And we typically uh, assume that that's due to increases and overall protein, actin and myosin and things of that sort. You're obviously going to also have an in, in, increase in other components to help support the cell, uh, but that's generally what we mean, an increase in cell size. And you know, when you think about like an epithelial cell or something like that, we don't really pay much attention to the size of those cells, right? Like it, I, I don't know that anybody, I don't know the dermatologist is looking at somebody's moles when they biopsy them and looking at the individual cells and talking about the size of them. Uh, there, we would concern ourselves much more with hyperplasia and, and certainly metaplasia or dysplasia. Those are the things that really get people concerned. Um, but in this sense, muscles are kind of unique in that they can have uh, not just a non-pathologic, but a healthy change in size. So is it, as you said, do you think it's primarily due to an increase in the amount of actin and myosin within the cell or some other characteristic? Is it, does the, does the actin and myosin uh, complex actually change in size or do you just have more of it? That's a good question. Um, I, I, I think that most people would say that because they usually connect it to short-term measures of protein synthesis. So myofibrillar, which is actin and myosin. So synthesizing more and more of those, I think is the general, uh, is the general thought that you have more overall actin and myosin along with other things, of course. And let's talk about strength now. So we can talk about sort of, we can kind of break it down right into kind of mechanical strength and, and neurologic strength. How, how do you think about that. So again, let's use the same example of you, you measure my ability to do a bicep curl. Um, and let's just assume there'll be two measurements. You'll measure my single rep max so the most that I can do. And then you'll also do a separate test for the most that I can do 10 times or 15 times or something. So you'll measure kind of two different components of strength, maybe absolute extreme and, and sort of more of a muscular endurance test. And then you'll have me do a set of prescribed exercises for six months and we'll come back and we'll do that whole thing again. And my one rep max went up by 20% and the amount of weight that I could move 10 times went up 15%. What happened to me mechanically, structurally, neurologically? What explains that change in strength? That's a good question. And that's something that, it's a question that I'm extremely interested in. And I don't know why people get stronger. I think the, 
the general thought or how we teach people is the initial change in strength is due to neurological changes. So, um, and, and that's up, what that means, what does neurologic mean, I think is also up to some debate. But we can think about a signal being sent from the brain through the spinal cord to the alpha motor neuron. So the alpha motor neuron is the nerve that communicates with the muscle. So there could be changes anywhere in between that. So you have more excitatory input, you have less inhibition, you have lowering of thresholds that makes it easier to fire the type two fibers. There's a lot of different things that, that could be playing a role there for why someone might get stronger um, with neural adaptations. So most people are okay with that part. The, the next part is people will say after about three to four weeks, when the muscle is also getting bigger, that that change in fiber size will also be contributing to a change in strength. And that's something that we have recently taken some exception to. Um, and there's been a lot of really good discussions about that part of it. But yes, Which, I, I do we'll come think, back to that, Jeremy, yeah. because I, sure. I've, I've read the studies that you're referring to. They're super fascinating. And I was actually surprised at how little evidence there was in favor of the dogmatic view. So um, I look forward to diving into that a little bit more. But, and you can see why intuitively one would say, well, size must produce strength if size comes from more actin and myosin, sure. which basically means more contractile units. Uh, but, but as right. we'll see, I think when we talk about uh, some of your more recent work, uh, that's not necessarily settled, is it? Not in my opinion, no. Um, and I, and, and to be fair, it's not settled one way or the other. Um, but I, I do think that there's a, probably a neural component, but I think that there can also be some changes at the local level that might explain some of those changes in strength. And I, I think we can discuss that a little bit later as well, but there could be some, some, you know, changes at the myosin head or changes in calcium release and things of that sort. So. I don't have any good evidence that that is actually happening, but just some ideas behind why someone might get stronger following exercise.